Statistics are supposed to make something easier to understand but when used in a misleading fashion can trick the casual observer into believing something other than what the data shows. That is, a misuse of statistics occurs when a statistical argument asserts a falsehood. In some cases, the misuse may be accidental. In others, it is purposeful and for the gain of the perpetrator. When the statistical reason involved is false or misapplied, this constitutes a statistical fallacy. The false statistics trap can be quite damaging to the quest for knowledge. For example, in medical science, correcting a falsehood may take decades and cost lives. Misuses can be easy to fall into. Professional scientists, even mathematicians and professional statisticians, can be fooled by even some simple methods. Even if they are careful to check everything, scientists have been known to fool themselves with statistics due to lack of knowledge of probability theory and lack of standardization of their tests. Importance. Statistics may be a principled means of debate with opportunities for agreement, but this is true only if the parties agree to a set of rules. Misuses of statistics violate the rules. Or to put it another way, false facts are highly injurious to the progress of science, for they often long endure, but false views, if supported by some evidence. Do little harm, as everyone takes a salutary pleasure in proving their falseness, and when this is done, one path towards error is closed and the road to truth is often at the same time opened. Charles Darwin, The Descent of Man, Volume 2, 385, Definition, Limitations and Context. One usable definition is, Misuse of Statistics, Using Numbers in Such a Manner That, Either by Intent, or through ignorance or carelessness, the conclusions are unjustified or incorrect. The numbers include misleading graphics discussed elsewhere. The term is not commonly encountered in statistics texts and no authoritative definition is known. It is a generalization of lying with statistics which was richly described by examples from statisticians 60 years ago. The definition confronts some problems. Statistics usually produces probabilities. Conclusions are provisional. The provisional conclusions have errors and error rates. Commonly 5% of the provisional conclusions of significance testing are wrong. Statisticians are not in complete agreement on ideal methods. Statistical methods are based on assumptions which are seldom fully met. Data gathering is usually limited by ethical, practical and financial constraints. How to lie with statistics acknowledges that statistics can legitimately take many forms. Whether the statistics show that a product is light and economical or flimsy and cheap can be debated whatever the numbers. Some object to the substitution of statistical correctness for moral leadership as an objective. Assigning blame for misuses is often difficult because scientists, pollsters, statisticians and reporters are often employees or consultants. An insidious misuse of statistics is completed by the listener, observer, audience, juror. The supplier provides the statistics as numbers or graphics, allowing the consumer to draw conclusions. The poor state of public statistical literacy and the non-statistical nature of human intuition permits misleading without explicitly producing faulty conclusions. The definition is weak on the responsibility of the consumer of statistics. A historian listed over 100 fallacies in a dozen categories including those of generalization and those of causation. A few of the fallacies are explicitly or potentially statistical including sampling, statistical nonsense, statistical probability, false extrapolation, false interpolation and insidious generalization. All of the technical, mathematical problems of applied probability would fit in the single listed fallacy of statistical probability. Many of the fallacies could be coupled to a statistical analysis allowing the possibility of a false conclusion flowing from a blameless statistical analysis. An example use of statistics is in the analysis of medical research. The process includes experimental planning, conducts of the experiment, data analysis, drawing the logical conclusions and presentation, reporting, 
The report is summarized by the popular press and by advertisers. Misuses of statistics can result from problems at any step in the process. The statistical standards ideally imposed on the scientific report are much different than those imposed on the popular press and advertisers. However, cases exist of advertising disguised as science. The definition of the misuse of statistics is weak on the required completeness of statistical reporting. The opinion is expressed that newspapers must provide at least the source for the statistics reported. Simple causes. Many misuses of statistics occur because the source is a subject matter expert, not a statistics expert. The source may incorrectly use a method or interprets a result. The source is a statistician, not a subject matter expert. An expert should know when the numbers being compared describe different things. Numbers change, as reality does not, when legal definitions or political boundaries change. The subject being studied is not well defined. While IQ tests are available and numeric it is difficult to define what they measure. Intelligence is an elusive concept. Publishing, impact, has the same problem. A seemingly simple question about the number of words in the English language immediately encounters questions about archaic forms. Accounting for prefixes and suffixes, multiple definitions of a word, variant spellings, dialects, fanciful creations, technical vocabulary. Data quality is poor. Apparel provides an example. People have a wide range of sizes and body shapes. It is obvious that apparel sizing must be multidimensional. Instead, it is complex in unexpected ways. Some apparel is sold by size only. Sizes vary by country and manufacturer and some sizes are deliberately misleading. While sizes are numeric, only the crudest of statistical analyses is possible using the size numbers with care. The popular press has limited expertise and mixed motives. If the facts are not newsworthy, they may not be published. The motives of advertisers are even more mixed. Politicians use statistics in the same way that a drunk uses lamp posts for support rather than illumination. Andrew Lang, what do we learn from these two ways of looking at the same numbers? We learn that that a clever propagandist, right or left, can almost always find a way to present the data on economic growth that seems to support her case. And we therefore also learn to take any statistical analysis from a strongly political source with handfuls of salt. The term statistics originates from numbers generated for and utilized by the state. Good government may require accurate numbers, but popular government may require supportive numbers. The use and misuse of statistics by governments is an ancient art.